and cut on that. Yes. Pat, I am serious. Stop it. You're not getting a spinoff. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it nowadays? It's sweeping the nation because we're the janitor of podcasts. But only... Seriously, Cat, you scared the crap out of me. But only real fans, true hardcore fans, who have been, been with us since the beginning, since episode one, would know the two main facts about the both of us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot. Because we would never do that. No. 100% true facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you're not doing the podcast, you are in fact a celebrated marine biologist. Uh, won so many awards, many accolades. So tell us, Bunny, what have you been studying lately? I have been studying... Saltwater aquariums. Uh, I have taken a, a, a deep dive into small tanks. Uh, I, I have been exploring the uncharted territory. Do you realize there's a creature in there? There's a creature. He goes like this, and bubbles come out of everywhere. It is truly, truly amazing. On one outing... Uh, going through the 55-gallon tank, our crew came upon a treasure chest. A treasure chest. Just, it, it, mm. it was all stuck together, but it looked like Spanish doubloons and things like that. And guess what? Mm -hmm. More bubbles coming out. Mm. What? So now That's we're trying crazy. to figure out the link between the treasure chest and the creature. Yeah, because hopefully they, we'll because be able to get to they the bottom have of this. bubbles in common. And they both bubble yeah. more than any of the actual fish do. Hmm. Hmm. Which leads me to think that they are both somehow more alive than the fish. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. You know, Shark so... bait! Ooh, ha, ha. So, <laughs> Yeah. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to figure this out. Okay. So and that the second is what we are going to be know. exploring um, from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to be a, a marine biologist, but the problem that I have is uh, water. It's so wet. When are we going to invent some dry water? You know? We need to get the scientists working on this. We need to get the scientists working on the dry water technology. And another thing, why does snow have to be cold? Yeah, true. Huh? I don't know, man. Get with it, science. E ever, ever, since, ever since I heard of it as an actual career... I have always wanted to be an exobiologist. Biologists Ooh. who study life on other planets. That's that. I think that's got to be the greatest fucking scam going. And I totally yeah. want in. Doctor, yeah. could this be an alien? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> sure. Fun fact, everybody, on Twitch and everywhere, SoundCloud, um, Stitcher, <laughs> um, uh, Bunny lives in the state of Colorado. He used to live in New York, New Jersey, somewhere, but he moved to Colorado because he wanted to be closer to the location of his favorite film, Battlefield Earth. Yes. Bunny is such a battlefield earthophile, and he's like, well, this movie was set in Denver. I need to move to Colorado. That is yeah. a fact, undeniable fact. Look at the graphic there. It says historical approximations. So there you go. So the, much the so, I will, not, I will not 
let John Travolta have sex with me unless he's wearing the Cylon get up the outfit. Yeah. Cyclons. I don't like John Travolta. Sorry, Cylons are the other guys. I, yeah. I don't like John Travolta. Um, uh, let me tell you why. No, you know what? Instead of telling you why I don't like John Travolta, I'd like to talk about a completely different subject. Like one of my favorite films, Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. There's just a great line in there that I love. I'm going to say it to you now. You are gay. You are gay. You are a homosexual. Yes. The opposite of straight. You're gay. I know it. Your family knows it. Dogs know it. Everyone <laughs> seems to know it except you. Oh, what a great movie, Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. John Travolta. Don't like the guy. Don't like the guy. I think he might yeah. be hiding something. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing that I'll say here. But that line in Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. Funny line. Funny film. Anyway, uh, the second fact that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do is, at this part in the story, so at this part in the uh, podcast, I like to get a story from the history books, maybe one that you don't know that well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling panache. <coughs> and that's what this is. Educationally, uneducational uh, installment of... Steve's Historic Approximations! Dun, 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 dun. Or Shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name Shap. It's short, but it's full of life. It's the Mickey Rooney of podcast segments. Fun fact, Mickey Rooney died at age 306. Are we uh, sure scientists. he's dead yet? We're baffled. Pretty sure he's not. Pretty sure he's not. Pretty sure he's just, he's a, a robot at this point. Anywho, this week on the old Chappity Shap Shap, we will be discussing a bizarre story about trains, irony, and people named George. Okay. I would like to repeat that a second time for emphasis. Trains, irony, and people named George. It's also the story of the first labor organization led by black people to officially become a part of the American Federation of Labor. It is a strange, bizarre story that has been lost to the sands of time. Babe Ruth is a part of it. Martin Luther King is a part of it. It's a weird story, so let's do this. So, there are trains. You know trains, right? They're the chugga-chugga-choo-choo things. So trains had porters. And a porter's job is to attend to the passengers of a sleeping car to assist the passenger's needs, to handle the loading and the unloading, and to generally be there when anyone needs them. And in the early 1900s, most people were traveling by train and by sleeping trains. And so a lot of people became used to dealing with porters. Porters were everywhere to attend to your every need. And since it's like 1910, we're talking about here, it should come to no surprise that the porters who worked America's trains were almost all black. And, uh, yeah, this is America we're talking about, so I don't need to say this, but I'm going yeah. to anyway. Yeah, they were treated like fucking shit. Yeah. They were treated horribly, not treated good. Most of them were ex-slaves whom the white railroad barons expected to basically act like their own personal train slaves. Let me tell you about a porter's job. They worked over 73 hours a week. A week! Think about that. And they earned only 27 cents an hour. And they also had to pay for their own food, for their own lodging, for their own uniforms, and that alone, the food and the lodging and the uniforms, that would usually add up to about half of their pay. And if, if a train passenger, some white dude in 1910, 1915, uh, stole a towel, took a plate, broke a lamp, yeah, the porters would be charged for that. 
Yeah. That would come out of the porter's paycheck. And they could never get a promotion. If you were a porter, even if you were the world's greatest porter in the history of American portering, um, you could never get a promotion because the next position up was a conductor. And only white people could be a conductor, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, being a porter was absolute shit. It was fucking horrible. But also, it's like the 1900s, and so no one paid attention. No one gave a shit. So in 1914, there's a lumber baron. Real rich guy. His name is George Delaney. Okay? Super rich. Made all of his money in lumber. Super rich guy. He would start a joke organization, a fake, ironic organization that would accidentally, innovantially, indirectly lead to better conditions for porters and then later to uh, helping Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement. So this lumber baron, whose name was George, George Delaney, He's riding on a Pullman Company train, and he notices that, like, hey, Porter, come here, Porter. You've, you've helped me really good. Porter, and I thank you. What's your name? Oh, my name is George, sir. And he's like, huh, your name is George? Interesting. My name is George. Well, uh, pleased to meet you, George. I'm George. We're both Georges. There you go. So then... Uh, George goes on another train. He's a lumber baron, very busy going from place to place. He goes on another train, and he's like, uh, "Hey, uh, George, you really, you really, uh, hey, hey, uh, Porter, you really helped me out. I want to thank you. What's your name? Well, my name is George, sir. It's like your name is George, huh? The last train I was on, the porter's name was also George. That's weird. And sure enough, the next train that George Delaney was on, it's like, Porter, come here. This is going to sound weird, but is your name George? Why, yes, it is. And it's like, wow, your name is George? So many train porters are named George. This is really weird. And, and as George Delaney travels by train, he notices that so many porters were named George that even when the porter was not named George, people would call all of the porters George. That's how many porters were named George that white people were just like, I need to get the porter's attention, George. George, come here, George. I need you to help me. And so even when the porters were not named George, people were calling porters George, and that deeply upset George Delaney. To be clear, this was started for racist reasons, okay? He, d dude's like, hey, I'm a super rich lumber baron. Look at my monocle, my, my top hat, my cane. I'm super rich. And yet, when people see my name, you, you mean to tell me they're going to think I'm some poor black porter on a train? Hell no! <laughs> this has to change, and I'm going to be the one to change it. And so, in 1914, lumber baron George W. Delaney starts an organization, a joke organization, called the SPCSCPG. I know you remember that 100% with your photographic memory, Bunny, but just in case, I'm going to say it again. The SPCSCPG, which stood for the Society for the Prevention of Calling Sleeping Car Porters George. Because to George W. Delaney, this was the crime Okay. That so many porters were named George. I can't share my name with these poor black guys on trains. And here's the thing. If you wanted to join the SPCSCPG, here's the cute part. Only Georges could join. Okay. Yeah, I want to join the SPCSCPG. What's your name? Frank Sinatra. I don't care that you're super famous. You're not George Sinatra. Get the hell out of here right now. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Oh, my name is George Smith. 
Oh, pleased to meet you. Come right on in. Here's your SPC SCPG card. Well, you know what that tells me, though? This organization, hmm. obviously backed by George Soros. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those damn lefties always taking, always taking everything. Yeah. He's, so George Delaney started the organization as a joke and as a way to preserve the dignity of all of its white members, of course. Because if, if you're talking 1910, it doesn't matter what you're talking about, uh, it's probably racist. Yes. It's a good rule of thumb for this time. But this joke organization <coughs> surprisingly took the fuck off. Uh, it became very popular. At its peak, the SPC SCPG had 31 thousand card carrying members across the globe okay including but not limited to king george the fifth president pro tem of the senate walter f george and this is true baseball legend babe ruth whose real first name was george Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Babe Ruth. They call me the Babe, the living legend, the Bambino. I'm the greatest baseball player of all time. Yeah, I'd love to sign your autograph. But first, let me tell you about a real problem. You know all these porters? They're named George. This yeah. has to stop. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> yeah. And yes... Okay, the SPC SCPG was created because a bunch of uh, white people were butthurt. But the group did succeed. It became so popular that, oh, did you hear about this? The S SPC SCPG? Uh, yeah, they're trying to, to, to get people to stop calling all the porters George. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Isn't that a weird, funny little quirk? Anyway, why are all the porters named George? What do they do? Where do, what is their job? How much do they get paid? So this ironic organization did succeed in shining a light on the nation's porters. And yes, as it turned out, so many porters were named George because trains were a thing, the Civil War happened, suddenly all of these slaves are freed and they are looking for a job trains were super popular and so it was a common occurrence for freed slaves to get jobs on trains as porters and um it was custom during the slave trade that slaves were named after their masters and who was the main person with these sleeping train cars going all throughout America back then? Railroad Baron George Pullman. Yeah. And so, yeah, because it was custom that slaves were named after their masters, the railroad, the train porters were mostly named George because of slavery. So there's a spotlight, and people are realizing that, like, yeah, uh, this is bad. This is really bad. They're treated like crap, and uh, maybe they all shouldn't be named George. Maybe they should be treated a little bit better. So suddenly there's a spotlight on the train porters in America, and uh, so the porters met and tried to unionize a couple of times, actually. But you gotta realize, this is like the 1910s and the 1920s, so America has a pattern. Oh, uh, uh, these porters wanna unionize. Okay, well, we'll send a couple of spies in there, find out their meeting, and then when they are getting ready to finally vote on whether or not there's going to be a union, we're gonna send people over there with bats to beat the shit out of them, maybe kill some of them, and. Uh, make sure that they're too scared to ever unionize again. And this happens a couple of times. And the black people are trying to unionize. The train baron spies would find out. They would send angry, violent white men to beat the crap out of the unionizers. Finally, on August 25th, 1925, the porters have had enough. 
and they meet in Harlem and they find they founded the BSCP, also known as the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. Their motto was fight or be slaves. And FYI, this is the shit that white educators decided that you didn't need to learn growing up. Yes. How fucked up is that? That educators are like, oh, this is about, uh, what, black people uniting? Oh, kids don't need to learn about that. You know what they knew, do need to learn about? About how Thanksgiving is all about how Americans were real nice to Native Americans and nothing bad ever happened. Yes. Did we their land? Yes. But let me teach you about something really important. Manifest destiny. We're not stealing the land from Native Americans. Is that it's that God wanted us to have it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what this all was. Anywho, the eighteen thousand members of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters was so powerful that they were able to get better working conditions and a higher raise, and they ended up becoming the first ever labor organization created and led exclusively by African Americans to officially receive an official charter in the American Federation of Labor. And here's the amazing part. Here are all of these uh, black men who are leading this organization, and they fought to make sure that black sleeping car porters got better wages and better health, and they helped black people get a fair share in the train world. But then it's the 1940s, the 1950s, the 1960s. Less and less people are riding trains. So the leaders who ran the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, all of them would become prominent leaders in the civil rights movement. Because, okay, we have already spent the last couple of decades trying to get a fair share for people. Now that uh, people aren't riding trains, what are we going to do? Oh, we, we can go over here and help Martin Luther King and help Malcolm X and be a voice in the community and help all black people get a fair share and not just uh, sleeping car porters. And so this is the story of, I, of an ironic organization and a very real organization that helped end segregation and fought for fair employment for black people. And I know I usually say this at the end of SHAP, but like, goddamn, I can't believe that more people don't know this story. And that's sad because I feel that this is an important story in African-American history, which, of course, is not being taught in schools because instead yeah. we're being taught about uh, the Nina and the Pinta and Santa Maria. It's it, it, uh, America is all fucked up, is what I'm saying. But I'm surprised that more people don't know this story. Uh, the the SPCSCPG, the Society for the Prevention of Calling Sleeping Car Porters George. I find this to be a fascinating story. This is utterly a fascinating. fascinating. Story. Did you get a chance to look at? The Toronto Circus Riots of 1855. No. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I shot you a message about it. Oh, okay. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's on my list. The Toronto Clown Riots of 1855. Yes. Oh my god, this is frightening. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's on my list of shaps that I hope to eventually do, which is growing bigger and bigger by the second, but that's beside the point. Well, you see now, um, uh, I can only handle stories like this in shaft form. So, like, I cruised the story, got the highlights, and I was like, I know where this has to go. Yeah. And 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 dropped it from there. Because it's it's not a shaft. I don't want to know any more about it until it is. 
I love that. I love that very much, Bunny. Uh. I appreciate that, too. I appreciate <laughs> that. Anywho, next week, be sure and join us for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations! And cut on that. <laughs>